Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It is so good to be here. I tell you, I am so full of hot dogs. <laughs> I only had two, but I I feel a burp coming on. I, I'll try to withhold it, okay? Amen. It has been so good this week. I mean, it has. I, it's been tremendous. Y'all have been so good to come every night and to listen to us. And, uh, and it looks like most of you have enjoyed it. Amen. There's been one or two grumpies, but for the most part, really. And we praise the Lord for that. And uh, I tell you, God sure is good to us. But I believe He's met with us every night out here. And, and I thank Him for that. And, and church, thank you all so much. Pastor, thank you for inviting Miss Pam and I, letting us be a part of this meeting this year. And we thank you. And I praise the Lord for it, church. And we just love you folks. And kind of hate to see tonight come uh, to an end, you know, but uh, that's part of life down here. Miss Pam saying about uh, I won't have to worry anymore when we get over on the other land, uh, to the other shore, amen? But, uh, you know, when we get there, there's a, good, there's a lot of good things about heaven. And one is, folks, listen, we'll never have to say bye again. Amen? That's going to be wonderful, praise the Lord. And I'm looking forward to that. Open your Bibles tonight to the book of Numbers, Numbers chapter number 10. Numbers chapter number 10, verse number 28. Numbers chapter 10, we'll begin verse 28. Thank you, church, for taking care of us so well this week for giving us a good place to stay uh, to park our motor home. Thank you all for taking care of that. Uh, thank you for the food that you've uh, given to us all this week. We've uh, had food given to us. We've come to the church and eat. And uh, hey, just thank you all. And I, I don't know what the love offer is going to be. Uh, and don't worry. I'm not worried about that, but just thank you for whatever you give. <laughs> Are you mad at me because I missed your name last night? Is that what it's about, Todd? <laughs> Sorry, little rascal trying to get even. You think that car wreck was bad, but you know I get through it. Have you, ever, right. have you ever been nubbed? Uh, it's worse than a tree in a telephone pole, I'll tell you that. Amen. Amen. It has been good this week. We've enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank all of you. I mean it. Praise the Lord for you. Numbers chapter number 10, verse 28. You stand with us tonight. Would you do that? Numbers chapter 10 and verse 28. Children of Israel were in captivity in Egypt. God used Moses. Moses went down there, and of course, uh, we know the story concerning Moses before this, but God used him to deliver Egypt, or, or deliver the Israelites out of Egypt to set them free. They're free. They're not, uh, God didn't just set them free and said, all right, you're free now, just go. But God had a place for them to go, amen? That's kind of like us. God doesn't just save us, but he's got a place for us, amen? And so, uh, Moses is leading them to that, the Bible calls it that promised land. And so they're on their way. They pause in, a, in, in the wilderness of Paran. In verse number 28, the Bible says, Thus were the journeys of the children of Israel according to their armies when they set forward. And Moses said unto Hobab, the son of Reuel, the men of night, Moses' father-in-law. In other words, this man Hobab is Moses' brother-in-law. And he says to him, we are journeying unto the place of which the Lord said, I will give it you. Come thou with us, and we will do thee good. For the Lord hath spoken good concerning Israel. And he said unto him, this is the reply of the brother-in-law, he says, I will not go, but I will depart to mine own land and to my kindred. And he said, leave us not, Moses again speaking to him, I pray thee, for as much as thou knowest how we are to encamp in the wilderness, and thou mayest be to us instead of eyes. And it shall be, if thou go with us, yea, it shall be that what goodness the Lord shall do unto us, the same will we do unto thee. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you tonight, Lord, for your precious word. God, we thank you, Father, for the promises that are in this book tonight, Lord. And God, therefore, whosoever will, and Lord, I pray tonight, dear God, that we have 
been cashing in on these promises. Lord, we've been claiming them, and not just a matter of claiming them, but we've been living them, Father. And if, Lord, if we have not, I pray tonight, dear God, that you'd help us. I pray, Lord, that you'd help us to realize, Father, uh, we, we can live in the blessings that you have for us. Lord, I just pray, Father, that you'd help us Christians tonight to draw closer to you. That's what this revival's been all about, is to get a little bit closer to you, just a little bit closer. And Lord, if there's been somebody here this week that maybe they've not taken giant steps, but just little baby steps toward you to get a little bit closer, Lord, then this revival has been worthwhile. Lord, and help them to realize, Lord, they may not be as close as they really want to be, but Lord, if that desire's there and they've started in that direction, Lord, God, it can be so. I pray that you'll bless them. Father, I pray tonight, Lord, for those that are lost and do not know you as their personal Savior. Those, Lord, if now I know they don't want to admit this, but the fact is those that if they were to die tonight, Lord, they would die without you as their Savior and they would go to a devil's hell. I pray this will be the night that you'll get their attention and then realize they are a sinner. They are lost. And they are headed to a devil's hell, but they don't have to go there. I pray, Father, that they would come. Lord, it, it wouldn't interrupt us at all if they came during the service and bowed down in this old-fashioned altar and cried out to a God that's able to hear and answer. Lord, I pray they'd come before it's eternally too late and be saved. Lord, help us tonight as we preach now. Father, I know it's cool tonight. I know, Lord, that folks are tired, weary after the, the long week of working and going to school and doing the things that they've had to do all day, then coming out here and being under the tent and sitting in these chairs at night. Lord, I thank you for their patience. I thank you, God, for their willingness to do that. But I know they're getting tired. Lord, I know how the flesh is. Lord, it's weak. And I pray tonight, God, that you just help us tonight as we preach. Lord, that it wouldn't be so long. And, Lord, that it wouldn't seem so long. But, Lord, that it would be, God, just your will being done. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Here in Numbers, we find as Moses, as the Scripture tells us, they're traveling. They're on their way to the Promised Land. As a matter of fact, they're not very far away at this point. They're not very far away. You say, Brother Danny, they wandered 40 years in the wilderness after this. But wait just a second. They're at the threshold of going into the promised land right here in these scriptures we read. They're, get, they're very close to that promised land. I mean, they're so close. My friend, now most of them, they don't realize how close they are, but they're very close. If you read your Bible, my friend, they're just, just a, a little ways from Cadiz Barnea, that place of crossing over, my friend, to go into the promised land. I mean, they're very close. Yet many of them didn't know it. They never realized how close they were. But they were very close. As they're there, they hesitate in the wilderness of Paran. And they're, they're there for a moment. And, and Moses, uh, his path crosses. Of course, him and the children of Israel. His path crosses with uh, uh, this, this man that is his brother-in-law, Hobab. And they begin to talk. And, and, and Moses begins to consider where they're going. And, and this good place that they're going. Remember, the Bible calls it a land that floweth with milk and honey. Amen? Now, that doesn't mean that there's there milk and honey waist deep all over the land of Canaan. It means that the blessings of God are in that land. Amen? And so there, Moses is considering this, and then he stops and thinks about it. And, and I can, I, it's, it's like a, us Christians when we realize that we're saved and we're going to heaven and there are those around about us that are lost and they're going to hell. And we realize, you know what? It'd be good if they'd come and go to heaven with us. Amen? Well, wouldn't it be good if they'd come and go to heaven? And, and so that's, I, that's the way I picture with Moses. He realizes, man, it'd be good if my brother-in-law and his family would come and go with us into Canaan land, into that promised land. And so what does he do? He gives him an invitation. Isn't that precious? Yeah. Amen. Isn't, that pre isn't it precious when we stop and consider we're going to the promised land? Amen. That's what heaven is for us that are saved. It's the promised land. Amen. And we're going, and we realize not everybody's going. 
And so we, we consider this thing and then we come up with this conclusion. Let's invite him to go with us. And so we do. Amen? Amen. If you're here tonight lost, you know what? You've, been, you've already been given an invitation to come. You say, no, they invited me to come to, to church, to this revival tonight. Yes, I understand what, what you're saying and you're right. But my friend, sometimes that's our feeble way. Excuse me. It's our feeble way of in, inviting you to come and go to heaven with us. Right. Amen. Amen. And so we'd sure like for you to do that tonight. Amen. Amen. I mean, really, we'd love for you to come and go to glory land with us. Uh, there's no need wandering around down here and thinking, boy, this is, is this as good as it's going to get? I can answer that for you. Yes. If you're not saying this is as good as it's going to get. But there's a land, there's an old song that says, there's a land fairer than day. And by faith we can see it afar. We're talking about heaven. A real, genuine place. So Moses gives the invitation. I like the way he gives the invitation. He says to him, here in verse 29, about the middle part, just before the middle, it, it says, we are journeying unto the place of which the Lord said, I will give it you. Amen. Amen. He says we're journeying to a place not where we're going to have to work and labor and pay for it. Not where we're going to have to build it up. And not where we're going to have to make the blessings come alive. But we're going to a place where God has promised us. Amen? Hasn't God promised us heaven tonight? Amen. Praise God for all those that will believe and trust in His Son. My friend, He's promised us a place called heaven. Hallelujah. We're not going to have to work for it. We're not working for it tonight, folks. Amen. Our labor is not laboring uh, for heaven, but my friend, our labor is because we're going to heaven. I mean, that's like Moses and the children of Israel here. You know, they're laboring, so to speak, as they're walking and had to do all these things, my friend. But it's not to earn the promised land. It's because that's where they're going is to the promised land. I'm telling you, it's a good trip. It's a good trip. And then Moses goes ahead and he says, Come. Come thou with us. Come thou with us. Well, Moses looks at his brother-in-law and he says, Come on, go with us. He said, In, in this come and go thou with us. He said, Come. Come. Well, you mean just get up and go? Well, yeah, really. Come by way of the cross of Calvary. That's how you go to heaven. My friend, listen to me. They were, they were going and journeying to the promised land. There, there was, as far as God was concerned with them, there was only one way. That was God's way. Amen. They couldn't go to the promised land two or three different routes. Uh -uh, they would have missed it. They would have missed it. They had to go God's route. What are you saying, preacher? There's only one way to heaven. You say, I guess that's your way, huh? No. God says, the Lord says in His Word in John chapter 14 and verse number 6, He says, Jesus is speaking. He said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. He's the way. Uh, it's, uh, you say, oh, oh, I get it, I get it. Y'all, you Baptists, y'all the only one that's got the way. No, no, you still missed it, haven't you? It's God's way. It's just like when it was in Moses' day, my friend. It wasn't Moses' way. It wasn't Aaron's way. It wasn't the Levite's way. It wasn't this tribe's way or this tribe's way. It was God's way of getting to the promised land. Or you don't make it. Some of them didn't make it. You know why? They weren't willing to go God's way. They thought they could go their own way. They grumbled, gripped, complained. Many of them did to the point because they weren't happy going God's way. I, I see a lot of folks in the church today that are not going to make it. You say, Brother Danny, I thought we were saved by grace. We are. But the problem is some folks are not willing to go God's way. They never have been. It's not just that today they get cross with God. They've been cross with God ever since they started. They've just not been willing to go His way. Amen? In other words, they never really got saved. 
Amen. Never got born into the family of God, praise the Lord. Boy, I'm telling you this morning or this evening, here's Moses. He's giving him this invitation. He said, come. Come, thou. Come with us. Come. And, and I'm so glad. Boy, I, I, I don't mean to lift y'all up all that much, but I'm so I, I'm just so thankful that God let our paths cross, Brother Ron. I, I am so thankful that God let me meet you and let me meet this church family. Miss Pam and I, we're so thrilled to just get to meet you folks. I mean that. Well, oh, we'd have met younger in heaven, but it's good to meet down here. What are you saying, Brother Dave? He said, Moses said to him, said, come thou with us. He didn't just say, come and go. He said, come with us. Well, I tell you, this is a good group of folks to go to heaven with. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I mean, this is a good group to be going with. Right. Right. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm glad. It's not just Miss Pam and I traveling this long journey, my friend, long and lonely journey. It would be. But God gives us other family members yeah. to travel with. Amen. Moses says, come back with us. Come on. We want to invite you now. Just come on, go with us. Come on, because if you don't come and go God's way, you won't go. You see, Canaan land was provided by God. Heaven is provided by God. You know what that means? That makes it God's heaven. You see, if you're lost tonight, we can't, we're not offering you the pleasures of this world. They're not within our grasp to offer to you the pleasures of this world. And by the way, the pleasures of this world, they fade away very fast. Amen. But I'll tell you what we are offering you tonight. The King of glory, the King of heaven, has authorized us as Christians. Amen. To get to extend to you an invitation to come and go with us to heaven. Amen. Amen. That, that's exactly where Moses and the children of Israel are. They're in a place where they can extend this invitation to these other folks and say, Come, this man, Hoab, is not an Israelite. He's not a Jew. He's not one of those. Uh, what we would call God's children. He is not, my friend. But but Moses said, you come and go with us. You come and go with us. You see, you may not be a Christian right now, but if you'll come, my friend, and trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can come and go with us. You'll be a Christian as you go. Amen. Amen. He says, come thou with us. Then notice what he says. He says, come thou with us and we will do thee good. Amen. We'll do thee good. Well, again, I'm so thankful for the church. I'm, God knew what He was doing when He established the church. Amen. I mean, listen to me. God gave us the church that as we go to heaven, as we journey down here, we have, we have a church that will do us good on the way. Man, I remember when I got saved, I didn't know one thing about the Christian walk. I didn't know a thing about it. God, God saved me at a good church, my friend, because they taught me. They worked patiently with me. Amen? I mean, I was ignorant to how to fit in to a church. I didn't know one thing about it, but those folks were patient. That pastor, thank God, was patient and they worked with me. I mean, listen to me. They took me as a baby. They helped me. My friend, they changed my diaper, so to speak. They fed me the bottle, so to speak. They burnt me when I needed to be burnt. They taught me to crawl. They taught me to walk. They taught me to run. They taught, listen to me. What I'm saying is the church has, it has taught me about ministry. Yes, yes. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus came not to not to be ministered unto, but to minister unto others. You know that's what we are when we're saved, we're saved not to be ministered unto, but to minister to others. Some of us we've been saved for years, and you know what we're still doing? Serve me. Come on, you're supposed to do it for me. Come on now, help me out. Come on now. Well, they didn't even shake my hand. Huh? Well, 
Boy, I, you know, they, they, I was there. There wasn't three people that spoke to me. You know what you're saying? No one served me. Grow up. That's right. You ought to be serving right. instead of having to be served. Instead of you expecting everybody else to come and shake hands with you, why don't you go shake hands with everybody else? Amen. Huh? Well, aren't we guilty? We ease in. We find our little spot. And every service we come in, and we go to our spot. And then every one of you better come around and shake hands with me and speak to me and be nice. <laughs> uh, isn't that the way it is? Yeah. Have you ever thought about getting out of your place and going to somebody else and saying, it's good to see you this evening. <coughs> Don't you like it when folks tell you that? Yeah. Don't you? Yes. Somebody be having a hard time answering. <laughs> <laughs> It's good when folks come in and shake hands with you. Hey, it's good to see you tonight. Well, if it feels good to you, don't you think it feels good back to them? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Now, I apologize. I wish I could get to each and every individual, every service, and shake hands with you. I do. Some of you, I really don't want to, but I'm out of <laughs> You know, you're those that, you, that when you go speak to them, 45 minutes later, you're still trying to get away. Amen. I don't care about being around you that much. Amen. But I, nevertheless, I have to. Because I love you because God tells me I have to. Amen. Now, boy, listen. We, we, need, we don't need to be served all the time. It's good for us to do a little serving. Amen. Listen, I found this out in the church that that's what we're supposed to do. Moses said, come thou with us and we will do thee good. And that's what the church is about. It's about reaching out in the community and getting folks in. And as they come in and they come and get saved, we begin to do them good. Amen? We begin to help them grow. Yeah. I mean, we, we try to build them up in the Lord. I don't mean get them off to the side and say, hey, you know, so and so. Don't uh, listen. Uh, they they pretend to be a good Christian, but I think they're a hypocrite. No, you're not. You're not ministering to anybody. What you're doing is the devil's work, not God's work. Moses said, "Come, and we'll do thee good." And I got to throw this in here. As Moses is speaking to Hobab, his brother-in-law, he says, "Come thou with us." Now, this is important. He didn't say, you come and we'll go with you. He said, come thou with us. You know what that means here? Here's, here's the way I take it. I think it means this, Brother Ron. If I'm living in this area and I come here to church and I visit in the services and then I decide, you know, this is where I think Miss Pam and I ought to be. We're going to join this church. Now, there's some things here I don't really like. I don't agree with the way things are carried out. But we're going to join this church and we're going to change it. Uh -huh. Now wait, listen to me. You'd be surprised how many folks got that wonderful idea. Huh? Hmm. Moses, listen to me. Moses is saying to him, you come down with us. You come with us. In other words, you got to come and be like us. You don't come and make us like you. Hello? You come and be like us. That's what, that's what the invitation is, folks. Amen. I mean, Moses is expecting Hobab to come even though he, he's a Midianite. Median but he's, not, he's saying to him, you got to come and go with us as though you're an Israelite. That's right. Amen. As we're traveling and folks look at us, they ought not see any difference. You see, too many times we come in and we've got great wonderful ideas about the ministry. How we think it ought to go. But you're forgetting something. When you come to a church, they've already got a leader. He's called a pastor. Right. Right. And, and, and listen to me. God gives him the vision for the ministry. Yeah. Absolutely. Amen. You may not agree with that, but that's the reason I'm preaching this to you. Okay. Amen. Amen. Because it's the truth. He's got the vision. He's got the burden for the ministry. So if, if, hold out, if you come along, 
I'm not asking you to come up here and walk side to side with me and making all the decisions. I'm just, I'm just inviting you to come and go with us. Amen. Amen. That's where we, that's when we fit in and we can do one another some good. It's when we fall in line. Hey, you like this church? Would well, it get in here and be a part of this church? Don't make it like that when you come from. Why would you want to make it like the one you came from? Why did you came from it then? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it doesn't make much sense. Preacher, we just didn't fit in. We didn't like it over there. I didn't like nothing that happened. We're coming in here and we're going to try to make this just like that one. <laughs> we do. You know, I've seen people do that. You say, well, that's kind of dumb. Well, I'm glad you said it. I didn't want to say that. <laughs> Y'all are helpful. I mean, that really. Praise God. But Moses came and said, come. Come with us and we will do the good. Well, Moses, what gives you the right? How can you say those things? Preacher, how can you get up there and preach those things? How, I mean, what gives you the right? Well, the Bible then says in that same verse, the end of it, for the Lord hath spoken good concerning Israel. Moses said, I, I'm telling you, good things are going to happen to those that come and go with us. Amen? Right. I'm telling you tonight, good things are going to happen to those that come and go with us. Right. Oh, and, 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 listen, Moses, nowhere did Moses say, we, it's been hit all this week, but nowhere did Moses say, Hey, you come and go with us. All the heartaches are over with. All the troubles are behind. No, he did not. But he did promise. Good things are going to happen. Well, I've been saved since 1969. Had my share of troubles and trials. But there's been a lot of good things. Amen. I mean, listen, it's through the church through this way of going to heaven, my friend, that God blessed me with my wife. Amen. It's through the church, my friend. We saw our children born in the church. Amen. Raised in the church. Well, the church helped us out in raising our children. Sunday school teachers would take them back even when they were in nursery age and take them in the nursery there and the Sunday school teacher, and she would tend to them in the nursery trying to teach them little songs about Jesus loves me, this I know. She was teaching them about the Lord Jesus Christ. Boy, that sure helped Miss Pam and I. Amen. I mean, then as they got a little bit older, another Sunday school teacher would take them in and take them back there and teach them. John 3, 16. Amen. And along the way, they're being taught that they're to honor and obey their parents in the Lord, for this is right. Yeah. yeah. Boy, that sure helped me in this, Pam. Man, when our children got up and got to be teenagers, and at that, those troublesome years, whether where you either want to love them to death or just any way they die, be all right. Amen. <laughs> God helped us so much. God helped us so much. They, our children were raised around preachers. We'd have missionaries in. Man, they'd come and they'd stay at our house. I, I remember the Filipinos, I'd call them Philippians. <laughs> they'd come and stay at our house. I mean, five and six of them would come and stay in our house. And our kids would sit around the table as we'd sit there at the table after service and and we'd be feeding them bologna sandwiches. <laughs> they thought it was the grandest thing. I think they really thought it was a dog, but it is. <laughs> we'd sit around that table and feed them. I remember one time we had these, this group in. They were a singing group from the, Filipino, or the Philippines. They were really Filipinos. I mean, they talked with broken English, and, and we had a time with them. Miss Pam had set them down to the table there after the service, she had bologna, she had mustard and, and uh, uh, ketchup and mayonnaise and bread and lettuce and tomatoes and all that. Uh, then she had uh, bananas and peanut butter and jelly and bread, uh, that kind of sandwich stuff. I mean, just all kinds of sandwich stuff. Here's these guys. 
They start making them a sandwich. I'm telling you the unstoppable. They start making, they lay a piece of bread down, they put a piece of bologna on there, they get a banana and cut it up, lay it on there, they put mayonnaise on there, they put mustard on there, they put ketchup on there, they put jelly on there, they put peanut, they put everything that's on the table. They got a sandwich about this thick that I wouldn't have touched. And our kids are sitting there going, Amen. I'm glad we didn't have a dog because they'd have grabbed him by the leg and thrown him out of there. But they ate that. And Miss Pam's trying to stop them and tell them, say, hey, you don't have to do that. You can make many sandwiches of different things. You don't have to. Oh, that's okay. And they ate it and smiled. Amen. But our kids, that's, what, that's the right way they were raised. They were raised to give up their bedroom so these missionaries could come in and spend the night with us. It really ruined them. They're all in the ministry. Our kids are all in the ministry. That's how it ruined them. You know what happened? Listen to me. We got with a group years ago before our children came along called the church. It sure has helped us because God had promised us Good. What did David say over there? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us. I know it says me, but follow us all the days of our life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, this is, I'm telling you, this is a good way to go, folks. You know, come with us and we'll do you good. You know, I've never had anyone in the church to say, why you do some drugs. <laughs> Amen. Stop that about it. Amen. I mean, I've looked at a few I thought they would do it. <laughs> but I, they've never, no, no one's ever done me bad. They've never said, hey, let's go get drunk. I've never had any of the men come up and they say, let's go out here and find us some women. I'm being honest with you. Isn't that what you get from the world? Huh? They're not trying to do you good. They're trying to do you bad. They're trying to get you into trouble. Come with us. We'll do you good. My friend, we'll teach you that you don't need that junk. Amen. If you really want to have fun, I'll tell you how to have fun. Go to an old-fashioned tent meeting. Amen. Amen. Oh, Moses is telling him. He said, come with us. And, and here he is. He's just, like, he's just like the world today. Verse number 30. He begins to make excuse. Uh, he said unto him, I, I will not go, but I will depart to my own land and to my kindred. He said, I'm going to go back to my kind because y'all are not my kind. I know. I understand where he's coming from. Well, when I first went to church, I didn't fit in. They were nice to me. I mean, and it wasn't that they, they turned their back and just let me walk by. No, no, no. They were nice to me, but I didn't fit in. And rightfully so. I'm glad, I'm glad they didn't lower their standards and, and, and make me fit in with them. Amen. Because if they had them, I'd have never seen the need of salvation. If the preacher had just hid the, the part about being a sinner and just overlooked that and just said, oh, you come on, oh, Danny, or Danny, just come on in and join the church, get baptized, and hey, you'll be one of us. Don't worry about this sin thing. Hey, we'll overlook it. I'm glad he didn't do that. I'm glad they preached about sin, how the sin was doing your soul to hell, my friend. And that's the reason I didn't fit in. I didn't feel at ease with them. Why? Because I was sitting among some folks that had been born again. The Holy Spirit dwelt within them, but not in me. When I got under conviction and I got saved, I started fitting in. Amen. You say, you really fit in? Yeah. That's the reason some of us get along so well. Because none of us got any sense. <laughs> Amen. We just enjoy the simple things of life. Amen. Like coming to church. Praise God. 
Why you stand up and sing some of them old songs? Praise the Lord. Amen. I mean, just like sitting there and listening to preaching and things going on with God. Amen. Well, I'll tell you what. No, the world don't fit in with us. We don't fit in with the world anymore. Praise God. But I'll tell you something. I can never, I can never fit back in with the world. Because I, I was of the world, but I got saved. I never can fit in with them again. But there's good news for you if you're a part of the world tonight. If you're lost, you can get to the place where you'll fit in with us if you're just getting saved. Here he begins to make excuses. and said, no, I'll just go back. I, I just don't fit in with y'all. I'm just going to go back to my kindred. I'm just going to remain like I am. Well, I'm telling you, this man don't realize what he's given up, does he? I mean, listen to me. He goes back to his kindred. You read your Bible. There's no promises made unto his kindred. He has nothing to look forward to. There's no hope for his kindred. Amen. No promises whatsoever. On the other hand, Moses and the children of Israel, my goodness, at the promises that they got. But not only the promises that God's given them, but the promises that they live out in their lifetime. You say, Brother Danny, they wandered around in the wilderness for 40 long years. And you know what? God took care of them year after year after year. Well, we always talk about how bad we got it. Have you ever thought about how good you have it? Hey, huh? Have you ever thought about just how good you've really got it instead of how bad you think you got it? Instead of griping about the things you don't have, you ought to start listing the things you do have. Put them down on paper. You'll get so excited after a little while you'll forget about the things you don't have. Amen. He begins to make excuses. Oh, Moses, I see in verse 31 as he begins to, to try to knock the excuse out from under him. Amen. He's, he's just trying to get him to go along with him. And then verse 32, he picks it up again. He says, it shall be if thou will go with us. Yea, it shall be that what goodness the Lord shall do unto us the same will we do unto thee. He said, whatever God does to us, it be so much that we can pass it on to you. Amen? Well, I'm glad I got saved. I, I Sometimes I wish I'd have got saved at an earlier age. I, I wish I had been like our children and probably your children. I wish I had been raised in church. Uh, Brother Ron, I, I wish I had been able to have gone to Sunday school as a kid. Hey Amen. Wouldn't it have been wonderful? Some of you have been saved at an older age, uh, uh, you know, above the 20 year age. Wouldn't it have been wonderful if you, when you was a child, you could have went in and there had been a Sunday school teacher that had taught you John 3.16. Wouldn't that, oh, I think about that sometimes. I'm on, and sometimes it almost breaks my heart. I think, oh, what it would have been like to have been a child and stand up there on the platform with some of those kids you know you see them do it. And they say, oh, how I love Jesus. And they say, for the Bible tells me so. I think, boy, I, I missed those years. I wish I'd have had that. Wish I'd have had that training when I was a teenager uh, from the Bible, from God's viewpoint of how I'm supposed to live. Wish that I'd have had all of that. I'm serious, folks. But I missed out on it. But I... I get to thinking about it and I get a little sad, but then all of a sudden I get excited and say, thank God I did get saved. Yes, Hallelujah. I didn't miss out on it completely. I'm getting in on it now. I, that, I'm trying to make up for lost time. That's the reason I enjoy this Christian life. And I didn't have it when I was little and young, my friend. That's the reason I act so childish now. <laughs> Amen. I'm telling you, it's a wonderful life. Won't you just come on and go with us? Hey Amen. Just come on and go with us. Praise the Lord. He says that whatever the Lord does, it'll be enough that we can pass on to you. Well, I'm glad. Praise God. There's a, there's a better land than this one. There is. The Bible assures us. You say, how do you know the Bible is not true? Or the Bible is true? Let me ask you a question. How do you know it's not? 
Have you ever thought of that? My friend, I, I, you know, here's how I know it's true. Because I've, I've lived it in my life and I've seen how God has brought it to pass in my life, the very Bible that we're talking about. I've seen God do things in my life that have been according to the Scriptures. That's how I know it's real. It's kind of like going down the highway out here. The speed limit's 45 and you're doing 65. And all of a sudden, the blue lights come on. And they pull you over and they write you a ticket. And you go on down the road. Did he? Okay. You go on down the road. And, and you got this ticket in your hand. And someone says, why are you late? Oh, I got pulled over down the road and got a ticket. You did not. <laughs> well, what, what officer pulled you over and you got his name? Oh, he would never write you a ticket. Not him. That, no, 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 no. <laughs> You ever had folks tell you stuff like that? Yeah. And you know good and well, hey, I'm telling you the truth. No, 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 there ain't no way. That's the way it is about this, this Christian life. Here we are, we're experiencing the joys of the Lord. We're experiencing God. We know He's real because He's working in our lives. And then the world that has never tried it is saying, oh, there ain't no truth to that. And here you are, you're about to explode because he's so real in your life. And you're saying, oh, he's real. And they're saying, no, 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 no. And they sit around and argue about something they know nothing about. And here you are, you are an authority on this thing because he lives in your heart. You're not telling them something that you read or something that somebody else told you, you're telling them exactly what happened in your life. How that you were lost and on the road to hell. You know, I've talked with folks, they were messed up with drugs. And I mean, literally messed up with drugs. And all of a sudden, the Lord Jesus Christ comes into their life and they get saved and, and their life changes completely. They get not only off the drugs, they get away from drugs and now they're living a clean life over here. And then you dare tell them there's no God and they're saying, hey, he's the one that got me off the drugs. Amen. 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 I, I talked to folks that messed up on alcohol. Their life is a total disaster. I mean, they're looking uh, to go to, to before a judge and they hear some sentencing up on their life because they got, got out there and got drunk and did some foolish thing, my friend. And as, as they're going, there's somebody, somebody praying for them. Somebody, some way, somehow gets the gospel to them. And they get saved. And they have to go ahead and go to prison. But as they go, they're a totally different person. They're not mad. They're saying, that's what I deserve. I was guilty. That's what I deserved. But I'm going knowing Jesus Christ and He's going to be in that cell with me and He's going to help me serve my time. And then somebody says, God's not real. And that person said, don't you know, He's the one that changed my life. It's like getting in the Bible and telling that lame man that's running around Peter and John leaping and praising the Lord. Man, he's just running and having a fit. Because Jesus has come into his life. He's been healed. He was a lame man, could not walk. And now he's up, not only walking, but he's leaping. He's just jumping and praising God. Amen. And somebody comes up and says to him, says, what happened to you? Oh, I was, I was that lame man. Remember, I used to sit over at the gate. Yeah, I thought I recognized you. What happened? Oh, I got healed. No, I don't believe that. <laughs> I, oh, no, there ain't no way. Wait just a minute. Do you know who you're arguing with? You're arguing with the lame man that's up leaping and praising the Lord. He's just a running, having a running fit because now he can walk. My friend, listen to me. The joy is not just because he can walk, but the joy is now in his heart. He knows Jesus. I mean, we could go on with this about the blind man, the leper. I mean, all of these folks, my friend, and someone stands in their face and says, oh, I don't believe that. Well, I'm telling you, listen to me. This is a good life. There'll be people who won't believe. 
But every once in a while, every once in a while, you'll have somebody that'll come into service that'll believe. Amen? They'll believe. And they'll trust Jesus, this one that's not real. And they too will get saved. Amen? Amen. Isn't that what happened? Moses is giving him a good invitation to come and go with him to a place. The Bible calls it heaven. I think of the name heaven. I mean, just the name of heaven. I'm saying heaven and there's smiles coming on your face. I'm just saying heaven. Doesn't that, I mean, doesn't that just excite you? Doesn't the name heaven just light your life up? Heaven. Well, God rightfully named it, didn't He? Heaven. Where are you going? I'm going to heaven. Hard to say that, like. I'm going to heaven. <laughs> Isn't it? It is. It's hard to say that. Automatically say, where are you going? I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to heaven. I mean, it kind of picks you up, amen. amen. Well, I'm thinking you say, yeah, but you don't know for sure. No, you don't know for sure, but I know for sure. Yes. Amen. Amen. I know for sure. Oh, it's a good invitation. You know what? That's what this church is all about, isn't it? Yeah. Is extending to everybody else an invitation to come and go with us. Right. Come and go with us. Now, when we get there, it's going to be woo, glorious. I mean, I know we don't do it down here, but we're going to be shouting in heaven. Amen. Oh. Why are you amen to me now? Won't you do it? <laughs> huh? Why, what are we waiting on? Well, uh, when my feet touch the street of gold, what? Why are you waiting? Are you going? Amen. Now you're afraid to say amen. <laughs> are you going? Amen. Well, let's don't wait to shout and praise the Lord. Hey, I think He's worthy of praise now. We don't praise Him because we're going to get to heaven. We praise Him, listen to me, not even because we're going to heaven. We praise Him because of whom He is. Amen. He's worthy to be praised, folks. He's worthy for us to sit there in the chair every once in a while, just raise our hand, let heaven know there's somebody down here that recognizes him. that place is real. Amen. Amen. Just to let God know, hey, Lord, I love you. Right. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm telling you, what an invitation. Yeah. And God has given us, God has authorized the church to extend His invitation to mankind. Come with us. We'll do you good. Church, we're going. Amen. Amen. I mean, we're really going. Remember when I first started tonight? I said they were closer to that promised land than they realized they were. I got a feeling we're closer to our promised land than we realize we really are. Amen. I think we're almost to the crossing over point. We all that's going to happen, my friend. The only thing I can see that's lacking is the trumpet sound. And when the trumpet sounds. This old boy is going to be out of here and those folks that says it ain't real, they're going to be saying, he's gone. <laughs> Amen. I don't know where he went. I know he didn't go to heaven. There ain't no place like that. And you know where I'm going to be? In heaven. Amen. But enough about me going. You come and go with us. Christians, listen to me. Quit, I'm sorry, quit grumbling and complaining about things of life. Everybody's got problems. So quit making yours so big and start realizing who really is big in your life. Jesus. He's bigger than anything. Why not come tonight and say, Lord, help me to enjoy this trip. Huh? Help me to enjoy this trip. And on this trip, I realize it's not about me, but I realize on this trip I'm to minister to others. Extend this invitation to others, and then others that have received this invitation, I'll help them to grow. I'll help them. I'll pull them alongside me, and I'll help them to enjoy this trip together as we go to heaven. Why don't we do that tonight?
why don't we get started in extending this invitation as individuals to others that we work with, uh, that, that we go to school with, that we communicate with, huh? Why don't we start extending this invitation? Because, folks, we don't have much longer. Amen. Boy, well, I'd like to see every one of you tonight. I'd like to see every one of you tonight in heaven. Now, I'm a going. So the rest is up to you. If I'm going to see you there, it's going to have to be because you want to go too. And you come and you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Let's all stand for me. Everyone standing, every head, head bowed and every eye closed tonight. No one looking around. Pastors up front, and you ask the organist if she will come. God speaks to your heart tonight. Would you listen to me? Folks, as we give the invitation, we speak to the ears that's on the side of your head. But God gives His invitation and He speaks to your heart. He speaks to that heart tonight. Why don't you come tonight and say, Preacher, I'm not saved. I, I, I'm not going to this place y'all keep talking about heaven. But Preacher, I'd sure like to. I don't want to die in my sins and go to hell. Preacher, I want to be saved. I want to trust the Lord as my Savior. I want to know that I'm going to this place called heaven too. Why don't you come tonight? Why don't you just come and Come up here, come to this pastor and tell him, say, Pastor, I want to go with y'all to heaven. I want to be saved. Now, I, I know, I know, listen to me right quick, I know. Some of you are saying, Preacher, uh, some of these Christians around here, uh, if that's Christianity, I don't want no part of it. I'm like you. I don't want any part of some folks' Christianity because their Christianity is, done, is not very much. But you can't judge Jesus by the people. Amen. People will let you down. But Jesus never, never has, nor will He ever let you down. So tonight, why don't you come in spite of people and come and go with us. You'll find out in the story that we read, if you follow it through, there were people that were going with Moses and them. My friend, listen to me. All they ever did was grumble and gripe and complain. They got out into sin. They got over here and sin. They got over there and sin. But my friend, listen to me. That didn't keep the rest of them from serving God and going to that place called the promised land. So I'm saying to you tonight, it's going to happen in this life. But don't let that keep you from going to heaven tonight just because somebody else lives like the devil and they say they're a Christian. Why don't you come tonight? Why don't you come tonight? My friend, to trust Jesus. Christians, why don't you come tonight and show, show others tonight you mean business with God. Show this world tonight you, you mean business with God. Hey, show somebody else that might be here in this service that they're, they're lost. Show them tonight that you're serious about your life with God. Show them you're on the, on the road to this promised land. Amen? This heaven. Let them know it tonight by your coming and praying. Pray for them. You say, well, I don't know who it is. You don't have to. You're not going to do the saving anyway. God's going to do the saving. Why don't you come and pray? Why don't you come and pray for yourself? Thank God for, for inviting you to go. Amen? Why don't you come tonight and pray? Ask God to help you. Father, Lord, we thank you tonight for your blessings, your goodness, and mercy. Thank you, dear Lord, for your saving grace and upon people that do not deserve it. None of us deserve it, Lord. But you love us anyway. God, thank you tonight. Thank you, Lord, for that saving grace. But Lord, also thank you for that keeping grace that we're kept by grace just like we're saved by grace. Thank you, Lord, that through this busy day you kept me safe. Lord, saved and safe. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for the privilege you've given us to come to church, to have a place to come to that will do us good, that we can learn of things of you and learn of, of your church and then learn some about heaven. Thank you, Lord. Dear God, I pray now tonight that you'll help folks come that need to come. Help us to respond to you the way we ought to, Lord. Help us to be obedient to you, Father. We'll thank you for what you do now in Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Let's keep our heads bowed tonight as she continues to play. Won't you come? Why don't you come? Why don't you come tonight and ask Jesus to save you? You can do it. Oh, listen to me. All you got to do is come and you say, 
I don't really know what to do, preacher. Come. I stood there. I stood there at the age of 19 not knowing what to do. Not knowing what was expected. I didn't want to die and go to hell. I wanted to be saved. But I didn't know. Finally, I just eased out and went to that altar. I'm glad the preacher met me there. My friend, listen to me tonight. You come, we'll help you. But we can't, we're not going to come and get you and drag you down here because it won't do you any good. You've got to come because you want to be saved. Why don't you come tonight? Why don't you come? Christians, why don't you come? Lead the way tonight. Lead the way. Burn the trail. Amen. That sets folks free to come. Christians, why don't you do that tonight? Come on tonight. As she begins to sing, why don't you step out and come right quick? Christian, come on.
says about nice clothes, let me say this one thing to you, if I may, and then we will close the invitation for tonight. One thing that I've learned about me living my life as a Christian is this. I came to the realization one day that I'm going to spend a whole lot more time over there than I'll ever spend here. So life is much too short to continue living it the way I had been living it. And so I want you to think about that. What preparation have I made for the hereafter? Since I'm going to spend a whole lot more time over there than I am here, maybe now's the time to just give up on all of those things in life I've been pursuing and going after and saying, you know, God, I'm not running anymore. I'm not walking away anymore. I'm going to put you first. As Jamie sings, that last verse, that verse is for you. To come to the place in your life where you make the decision to truly follow Jesus. As a Christian, maybe it's time. Do you say, you know what, I need to get back to where I should be. If you're here without Jesus, we want to share Jesus with you. As Jamie says, this verse is for you. Come on. Just seated tonight. All right, I'm going to ask for those that prayed with um, the others that came to the altar tonight. Are there any reports we want to share? Anybody? Maureen? Elizabeth over here accepted. Amen. 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 I want Donnie to stand. Donnie. We'll do you good, by the way. <laughs> Donnie, a few months ago, got saved here at our church, and he's come this evening to say he wants to follow the Lord in baptism. Amen. So Amen. we'll baptize him here. Thank you, Donnie. Anybody else have anything they want to share? All right, Jack, won't you come take our offering? If you would, please, girls, I'm going to let you sing for the offering tonight. Would you come up here? Okay. up this week over this offering, hadn't I? <laughs> I called you thieves and robbers and everything else. But you know what? If you're not doing what God put on your heart to do, or if you didn't even pray for God to give you something that, uh, this week that He wanted you to do, you know, maybe right now you got to just say, Lord, what do you want me to do? And that's what you need to do tonight. T try God and find out if He's not faithful about finances. You trust Him with your soul, trust Him with your finances. Amen? Now, men, I want you to go ahead. Yep. We're going to take a little love offering for the girls, too. So, however you're going to do this. Well, not for him? No, no, not for him. No, 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 he's, no, no he's out. <laughs> so just let the folks know, but I forgot to take Okay, how are you going to do that? It's, well, we'll put it in there. We'll, we'll, we'll get it. We'll get okay. It. Yeah. We're going to take a little bit of offering up for the girls, not him. <laughs> All right, let's pray. Father, thanks for being so good to us, and yet we're so undeserving. Thank you for your mercy and for your grace, and God, for your love. Thank you, Lord, for the word that we've heard this week. Oh, yes, we love Brother Danny and Sister Pam. God, we love you, God, so much. And we pray that our love will be shown in our service to you, and God sharing you with the lost and dying world in these last days. God, help us to be found faithful. 
And God, may you be pleased with our service. And God, as we are pleased with you for saving our souls. We ask you to bless this offering tonight for your glory, for your honor, for the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we need your participation. So if you please stand with us. I know we all can clap here. Let's help us and let's make Jesus smile, right? Let's go. Let's. Put your hands together. Come on. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. What you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You've got to praise Him, praise Him, praise Him in the morning, praise Him at noon. You've got to praise Him, praise Him, praise Him till the power comes down. Satan, your kingdom's coming down. Oh, Satan, your kingdom's coming down. Well, I heard the voice of Jesus say, Satan, your kingdom's coming down. Jesus saw the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus saw the main line, tell him what you want. Well, Jesus saw the main line. Tell him what you want, Jesus on that main line now. There ain't nobody, ain't nobody, do it like Jesus. Do it like Jesus. There ain't nobody, ain't nobody, do it like the Lord. There ain't nobody, ain't nobody, do it like Jesus. Cause he's my friend. Well, the reason I'm in this church, I don't want to be lost. You know, we criticize young people. But look at this. 
there's still young people serving God. Amen. And doing a good job of it. And I thank you. You guys were really good. And I, I kind of think you guys kind of got was just uh, maybe, no. maybe just a little bit uh, something. Uh, I, uh, you you are you guys an item? Oh, her, his wall is empty. So yes, they are an item. <laughs> Let's give them a big hand. And we're going to take up. We'll take something in the office for them. Thank you. Brother Danny and Sister Pam, I want you to come stand up here for a minute, please. The Lord put this on my heart a little while ago. The Lord put some on Brother Danny, or what's your name? Ron's heart. And, uh, and I've been thinking about what God put on Ron's heart, too. Uh, but um, we may never see them again on this side of heaven. I'm feeling all right. You better tell your face that. I mean, the Lord may be coming back here pretty quick to get us. Now, He's not coming back in the second advent right now. The first thing He's going to do is the rapture is going to take us out of here. And we all may go at the same time, but we may not see each other on earth again. Now, we're going to do something a little different tonight. I want as many people as can. I want you to come up here and I want you to circle around, Brother uh, Danny and Sister Pam. Come on, come on, come on. Now, just as all of us do, we all need traveling mercies when we drive and all that stuff. Come on, we got plenty of room up here. Brother Tom, I want you to come up here. And we're going to... You say, well, this is silly. Why couldn't we do this back there? Because, you know, it's good when saints circle the saints. And we're going to do that tonight. We're going to pray for them. I've asked Brother Tom to come up. I'm going to ask him to word our prayer. And you can also pray. But they need traveling mercies. They need the power of God on them. And they need us praying for them all the time. Now, Brother Ron has mentioned to me tonight, if you would slip your hand up and say, you know, maybe we have to support them as missionaries at our church. Would you slip your hand up? Anybody like that? Yeah, we got a lot of people, Brother Ron. I think it's unanimous anyways. But uh, Brother Tom, I want you to pray. And uh, pray as God leads you, okay? Father, I praise you for the wonderful meeting that we've had this week. I ask you, dear Lord, just for a special blessing upon these people. And I thank you, dear Lord, for the message that they brought to us that's touched so many hearts, that's touched my heart and my families. And Father, I ask you, dear Lord, as they get ready to go on to further meetings, I ask you, Father, just to give them the traveling mercies. Help them, dear Lord, keep them safe, keep them sound, keep their vehicles running. Father, we just ask that you, you get many souls for them, dear Lord, for their work. I ask you, dear Lord, just to put your hand upon them and just touch them. Let them know that they're appreciated not only here, but all over in the work that they're doing. I ask you now just to be with them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.